Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. Today you catch up with us back on the River Yare. The stretch we've chosen to fish is Bramerton Woods End. It's a lovely stretch of river, nice banks to fish on and everything's really comfortable. Now today's episode hopefully we're going to be showing you how to catch a few roach on the pole. We've got all the gear set up so there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about before we start the session. Now the first thing we'll have a little look at is bait. I've already mixed some ground bait up, that's just census roach river ground bait and as in there we've put some casters and some hemp. I've got some about a pint and a half of casters with me, I've got a tin of hemp, that's giant hemp that is quite important because this river flows quite fast so you want to get big heavy baits down to the bottom and that's the reason for the ground bait. Then we've also just got a few reds as well for the hook bait, double red, single red is probably what we'll be fishing as well as caster on the hook. Now we've already cupped in for the start of the session and there's a little thing I want to mention about where you cup your bait in. Now with ground bait it's nice and heavy and it does sink straight to the bottom. So with that in mind, you don't want to be catching your fish on a river miles to your left or miles to your right. You want to be catching fish just downstream of where you're sitting. Now at the moment, the river's flowing from left to right. So I've cut my bait in, four balls, of, like quite big balls of ground bait full of hemp and cast to try and get some bait there. And I've cupped it just to my right hand side. So I want to be catching fish about a foot past where I've put my bait in. So hopefully I'll be catching about two or three foot just to the right. And that is the perfect spot to catch fish on a river. You don't want to be getting your bait all the way downstream because obviously it's hard to get the fish to come back up. And it's even worse catching fish to the upstream side of you because you can't actually feed bait upstream as everything comes down in the river. And if there's someone upstream of you feeding bait, your fish are just going to follow upstream. So that is quite important. Last thing we'll do before we get fishing was have a quick look at the rigs. Now I've got two rigs set up today, so if we start up with a hook end, and this is my main fishing rig hopefully. We're starting with a size 20 hook, nice and small. That then comes to 010 G line, which is only a couple of pound, it's quite light. Now the shot and pattern. We've just got three number eight droppers, and then we've got the bulk of the Olivet, which is a one gram Olivet. The float I'm fishing today is one and a half gram. As I said, it is quite quick, so sometimes you do need a fairly heavy float. This may have to be up to as the tide picks up or if the tide slows down we may have to go slightly down in in weight as well so there's a one and a half gram drenum float and that just goes on to solid five elastic try and keep it nice and soft you don't want to be bumping fish on the strike so that's my main rig just a round bodied float rig now with this flow here you can't really control this rig as such so you just putting it in and letting it run down at the same pace as the river now that is hopefully how we'll be catching but sometimes with roach, you do have to be a little bit more clever. And this is where this next rig will come in. Now the bottom half is exactly the same, apart from it's a two gram Olivet, because this float is a little bit heavier. And it's what I like to call a bubble float. Now if you haven't seen these before, these are in between your normal round body floats that you've just seen on that rig, and a flat float. Now a flat float, if you haven't seen it before, is a very, very, like almost lollipop shaped float and you can actually hold them still in the current now this is what i mean by this is in between this float you can actually almost control how fast you put it through this the shape of it allows you to hold it back and you just inch it through whatever pace you want now sometimes the roach will want the bait really flowed at them and sometimes they'll want it just put through almost to standing still so it's this is a case if it's not just working running your rig straight through this is what you'll get onto next, and you can slowly put it through. And if you need to, you can go on a flat float. But I don't think we'll have any need for that today. So perhaps that's another video for the future. Anyway, that's enough of the talking. As hopefully we can get out some fishing. And along the way, we'll be talking a bit more, some techniques and tips to help you catch a few roach on your local river too. Let's get out there. I'm gonna start on single red. As I said, we've already cupped out, so I know exactly where my bait is. Right, we go. Now we're fishing at 10 metres, but I have got my 11 metre section behind me because we are going to need to follow your float downstream if your fish start to go down there. Now one other last thing before we see if we can catch a fish. Where I'm dropping my rig in is also quite important. As I said, my bait is about three foot to my right. I know that because I've cupped it in, 
with the tide pushing it down, it's going to be a couple of foot time the heavy ground bait sinks. So there's no point in me swinging my rig 10 foot upstream and waiting 30 seconds for it to come down where I'm going to be catching. I roughly know within a foot or two where I'm going to be catching. So you drop your rig just probably straight in line with you or just to your left and then time it settles, it's exactly on where that bait is sitting. So let's just drop this rig in. We'll have a couple of runs through and hopefully we'll have some fish on the bank. Well, that float's running through there nicely, so I think the grammage is right. Now the float is just over about where I cut my bait in. So, yeah, spot on. That's where you want to be catching your fish. It's literally just after where you've cut your bait in. That's, they give you a good indication, these roach, of where your bait is. And that was about two foot to my right, spot on where you want to be catching. Nice little roach start the session. Not massive, but throughout the session you can feel your way into it change bait to casters, maggots, and always trying different things. Now, at the moment, I'm fishing just on the bottom. My rig is just sort of touching it as it drags through, but sometimes these fish might have to be caught a foot off bottom, a couple of inches off bottom, or you might have to lay two foot of, of line on the bottom for them to feed confidently if they're really wanting to attack the bait while it's still. So you are going to need to change many, many things for a roach fishing session on the pole. And even on a stick boat, it's the same principle. If you've got flowing water, you're going to have to work hard to keep these fish coming. So we're just lowered in again. When you put that rig in, just lower it nice and slowly so there's no tangles. It's now going over where my bait's gone in and the bite should be about now. Just after it. Didn't hook nothing that time. That was on casters, so the bait's come off. Hopefully we'll whip this in and we'll have another fish for you very shortly. Well, let's see if we can have another fish on this run through. So just drop the rig just above where I think the ground bait's laying. It's going to run down and there we are. Bite right over top of the ground bait. Now if you can keep roach coming like that all day, that's when you do these big weights. Now I'm not saying it's going to stay that easy all day, but certainly a good start. Another smallish fish. See if we can nip the hook out. Perhaps have a run through on caster this time. Does tend to bring out these slightly bigger fish here on the year. Just nip one of them through the side. Get back out there for another fish. And that's what's saying that last drop there. You see how quick from lowering the rigging to actually having a fish hooked. Saves all that time running down your swim. You want to be lowering it exactly where you think you're going to catch and just above it. Now fishing on the air, most of the fish here get caught with every other fish or every other cast. Just a little nugget of ground bait where you cupped in just to keep them fish coming. In this flask flowing water, there's another fish on cast. In this flask water, the bait does get washed out quite quick. Oh, there's actually a little bit of debris there on the bottom, but that is get into this time of year you know it's cold and all the leaves are coming off so you are going to hook a little bit at the bottom if you find it a real issue then you can come slightly off the bottom and try that see if you catch it like that but we'll keep going for now just keep that bait trickling through just squeeze with one hand you don't want a big ball so sort of almost nip it off your fingers break it in half and then a little nugget just behind your pole float that run through, should be getting a bite about there roughly, slightly after. The cast is gone, so it was definitely a bite. See if we can try that one again. That on. We've got plenty of boats going through today. It's still mild ish for this time of year so people are making the most of it I think the odd pike boat going through as well right so we're lowering the rig nice and slow don't dump it in a heap let it settle and you expect your bites fairly quick if you don't get it straight away this is why you've got the section behind you because you can just 
slowly ship that section out. You don't want to be following your pole on a tight line because all you're doing is bringing your float off that line of bait you've just created. So as your pole float goes down, you just slowly slide your pole slowly out and then your float keeps on that same line where your ground bait's going. And there we are. Oh, we just bumped them. I think it's probably get back on the maggot. There's two bumped fish on the casters. Might not quite be ready for it yet. As they get a bit more confidence in the session, we should be catching on caster later on. Go back onto maggot. And the joint starts here with a section behind me, and we can ship back if we need to. Another small nugget of ground bait. We'll have a couple of runs through, and hopefully we'll have some fish on the bank. Well, we've been fishing for about 20 minutes to half an hour now. I'm just going to move some shot a bit lower down. So I want to keep my, make sure my bait's right down. This water has still got a bit of flow on it, so it's quite important to get my Olivet low, to keep that bait down to the bottom. And another thing we're now going to do, this is very, very important when fishing tidal rivers, and I find a lot of people forget about this, is initially you first plumb up, you catch a load of fish, everything's going well, and within half an hour you end up not getting any bites and you can't work out why. A lot of the time it's because you've completely forgot on tidal rivers as it goes down or out the water goes down and as it comes back up in flood the water rises. Now especially here on the Yare the water can fluctuate from low tide to high tide three or four foot. I mean it's a real big difference on a big tidal river like the Yare. So about every half an hour you just slip the plummet on and just go back out exactly where you're fishing and just see how far you're off or if you're on bottom or you're off bottom and see what's going on now already I can see there that float's going to need to be moved so we'll quickly ship this in sort that out and we'll go out again now I didn't say at the start roughly what I'm looking to start with is to be about half a float length to a float length over depth and that gives you just that little bit of play that when that maggot's trying to rise up your shot can bring it back down and make sure it's definitely on the bottom and like I said you could catch sometimes just off bottom or just over depth but a good place to start is about half a length or a float length over depth we're back on that mark now so hopefully we'll be back into the fish again it did go a little bit quiet for the last five or ten minutes and that is probably why it's because it's just river's gone down that float needed adjusting that does make a big difference sometimes another little point to mention as well if you are trying to catch or win a match and do some real big weights of roach if you find yourself do three or four runs through and you catch five or six better roach eight ten ounce roach where the other side of that you've been catching one or two ounce roach just put your plummet on it takes 30 seconds and see where you are at the depth you might find out that you're a centimeter or two just off bottom and that's where you're catching a big roach on and it's a great little tip to keep in your head to remember so then if you another slow patch you can go back to thinking i put that plummet on i wasn't quite on bottom and i catch some bigger roach than i was so it's always a good little tip to have and the plummet is a very, very important weapon in your army when fishing for roach on a river. See if we can have another run through now with plunder depth, see if it makes a difference. And there we are, we've got a fish on before we've even fed. Cracking little fish, great bite, and exactly as we started, fish straight from the off. Surprise now, little things make a big, big difference on rivers like this. Slip the caster on again, see if we can get a bigger fish. Lower that rig in. 
and we're fishing again. Well, everything seemed to be going pretty much to plan, but I think the resident pike's decided to have his lunch on one of my roach. I don't think we'll ever get this in, but it's a good time while we're trying to get this on the light line, just to talk you through what's happened for the last hour or so we've been fishing. We've had a few fish. There we are, he's gone. We've had a few fish, and um, the tide has actually now pretty much stopped. So we're just gonna fish it out. This is normally the slow period as the tide completely stops. But all I've been doing is slowly using the catapult more than putting little nuggets of ground bait in. Because all that's doing is just keeping them fish more central. So now as this tide starts to pick up and go the other way, I'll slowly go from loose feeding and catapult into the ground bait again as the tide really picks up. So basically all you're trying to do is keep that feed always in a two or three foot of either side of you. Obviously it's now all going to change in the next hour or so. I'm going to be fishing the other way and be fishing to my left next time. So it's just a case of this quiet period, sit it out, loose feed through the catapult, try and catch the odd roach if possible. And hopefully as this tide picks up, there'll be a few more fish on the bank. Just in case I've got to put a new hook link on now and then we'll get back out. Hopefully the tide will be picked up. tide has started moving again now the other way probably another five or ten minutes and I won't be able to use the catapult anymore because the tide will be too quick and then we'll switch to ground bait again hopefully by using that catapult I've switched my fish from one side of me to the other nicely we've had the odd fish it's not been the most productive slack water but it never is a brilliant time to catch. We just gotta hope these fish pick up again as the tide starts to pick up in pace. Another nice roach there. There's still the odd fish to be had, so give me a bit of confidence to carry on as long as I can with this catapult. Until we started feeding that, we really did have five or ten minute period where we put nothing in the net which is not ideal but again it's little changes you can make to keep fish coming on your bank I've switched between caster and hemp in the catapult trying to keep a nice bed of bait down yeah, there's two fish pretty quick it's the same principle even when you are feeding with a catapult, because the tide isn't running particularly quick, you're still feeding almost in line with you, lowering your rig, and you expect your bites pretty soon after lowering in where your bait is. And the fish will always tell you where your bait is, because that's where you get your bites. So if you're ever wondering, where is my bait hitting the bottom? Normally, it's where you get 90% of your bites from. So it's a great indication of how high or how low you need to feed in your peg. Well the tide is pretty much as fast as it's going to get now. The use of the catapult worked really well. It's moved my fish from downstream to my right. And now the tide has changed. They've switched down to the left but it has picked up a bit too quick now to use that catapult. So. I'm back on the ground bait, same as we were when we originally started the video, just in the opposite way around because the river's now running from right to left. We're not going to give it too much longer, we'll probably have a few more runs through and then we'll have a look what we've had. It's been a pretty productive day, I mean we've had a couple of hours fishing on the first tide and probably 45 minutes to an hour on this tide so we've had a good little session 
everything is exactly the same as it was. The more you can get in a rhythm when roach fishing, the better it's going to be. Keep everything to hand. And the quicker you are, the more effective you are. You should be putting more fish on the bank. We've put the plummet on quite a few times today. As I said, that is very important to keep that depth right. If you forget to do that, that's one of the biggest mistakes you can make. You'll struggle to catch after the first 15 minutes of the water changing. Let's give it another five or 10 minutes. We'll catch up with you in a bit. We'll let them go. There we are, another nice fish. A little bit further down the peg that time, but whoa, it's just been smashed by a pike. <laughs> I was going to say a little bit further down the swim but they have stayed pretty much where we want them to stay and this was going to be the last fish but the pike's got other ideas he's well out into the middle of the river a little bit of a shame because it was probably one of the better fish we've had today there he's gone but that's it it's probably a good time to end it the rain's starting to come and the wind's blowing so that's it for us today i think let's have a little look at these fish and then we'll get them back let's have a quick look what we've got Nice little net of roach, probably somewhere between nine and nine, ten pound. Great day's fishing. I'm just going to kneel down because it's a bit of a drop and we'll get these back. Well there we are, cracking few hours fishing. This may be a video we revisit because we didn't actually get to use the second rig. We didn't really have a need to today. The fish have been coming on both tides and it's been really, really good few hours fishing. Thanks again for watching. We hope to see you again on the next one.